what's up everyone sergeant Arger right here and today we're going to be reacting to battle of trivia i think 218 bc hannibal part four of the second punic war a history march oh there's a part five too okay wow so yeah should be really interesting and again I'm gonna announce this on every video just so I can get as many people as possible, you know, informed. I'm going to be doing my live stream like by the end of October or early November. So make sure to watch that. But I'll only do it if I have at least 195 subscribers by then. So yeah, make sure to subscribe. Let's 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 get there. It's gonna be it's gonna be fun. I'm gonna be answering those questions. You know, just be talking about the election, that sort of stuff, in the most, like, non-biased way possible. Anyways, let's get started. This video is supported by our sponsor, The Great... Courses Plus, oh. Courses Plus. After the defeat of Ticinus, the Roman Senate looks to save face by blaming Gallic allies for being ineffective. Taking comfort in the fact that Hannibal oh has yet to face the vaunted Roman infantry, Longus' arrival in northern Italy restores confidence. Hannibal now faces armies of both. Dang it, went straight into it. Okay. Roman consuls. History March. It's early December, 218 BC. Publius Scipio's life still hangs in the balance due to wounds he sustained at Ticinus. But, ironically, his troubles are only just starting. Oh gosh. His defeat at Ticinus has major consequences for Rome. Yeah. It directly caused the garrison at Clastidium to surrender the town's massive grain depot. This strips his army of food reserves and Did just- Did that last episode of them? Disrupts his supply lines, making any advance into enemy territory a risky venture. At the same time, Hannibal finally replenishes his own reserves, which were dwindling ever since he descended from the Alps, right until the clash had taken us just a few days ago. The damage to Roman prestige raises the danger of further defections. Yeah. What's worse? Yeah, they're going to lose the support of all their, like, Barbarian allies. Gallic tribes are flocking to join Hannibal. Oh, I was right. Enthused by his ability to defeat the Romans oh. and his softer administrative touch. Scipio has no option but to retreat, realizing he is deep in hostile territory. Oh my gosh. He marches to Placentia and makes camp across the Po River. Hannibal pursues and catches up two days later. Learning of his arrival, over 2,000 Gauls allied to Rome rise up in the camp and attack Roman soldiers, what? killing many in their sleep. Okay, first of all, what the heck is, what is up with these sound effects? But anyways. Before sunrise, they cross the Trebia to join Hannibal, bringing with them the severed heads of slain Romans. Jeez. Absolutely Using the Gallic brutal. defection as propaganda, Hannibal makes sure to spread the word that Rome's allies are joining him en masse, thereby boosting his popularity among the tribes. Okay, how the heck is Hannibal going to lose? I'm so confused. How how does Carthage get taken over at this point? It's obviously, most of y'all know that they do. Scipio again moves south, not wanting to risk being caught in the open. A day later, he reaches the hills and sets up camp in a strong position, with hills protecting his flanks from cavalry attacks. Then he settles in and waits for reinforcements. By mid-December, the two consuls join forces. Discussing how to confront Hannibal, Scipio argues against taking the field, 
stressing the Longus's troops lack experience and need additional training, having been raised less than a year ago. Longus disagrees and sets up camp a few kilometers north from Scipio's position. Just as eager to fight as Longus, Hannibal maintains his camp on the flat plain and surveys the potential battlefield west of the Trebia River. Meanwhile, he sends a raiding party to ravage the area along the river, suspecting that the Gallic tribes living there, who pledged allegiance to him, are now negotiating with the Romans. It's unclear if the Gauls intended to betray Hannibal, but with their villages now being raided, some of the tribesmen appeal to the Romans for help. Longus promptly sends 1,000 velites across the river to attack the raiders. With Hannibal's troops scattered across the area and encumbered by plunder, Roman troops start picking off small groups of Carthaginians, oh wow. quickly routing the raiders. Seeing this, troops on duty outside Hannibal's camp rush to the aid of the retreating raiding party. The fighting is fierce. I wonder if Hannibal's over, like him getting overconfident might have something to do with his later defeat. As both sides want to prove their superiority, that the Roman velites are soon forced into a fighting retreat. Oh wow! The skirmish escalates rapidly, spreading across a lot. This is this is turning into something that's not a skirmish. This is going to turn into like a full-on battle. Area. More and more troops from each side join in. Pockets of clashes yeah. develop as neither side is able to shore up its ranks. It becomes apparent that a chaotic skirmish might turn into a full-scale battle that yeah. neither commander will be able to control. Hannibal takes the initiative. He stops sending more troops into the fray, trying to avoid a battle that he did not plan and could do little to influence. He then audaciously rides out in person and rallies the scattered troops. He pulls them back and arrays them in a line outside the camp. Oh! Dang, he's like leading them all the way back from their camp. And he, Car Hannibal doesn't even have the rest of his troops yet. He can, like, deploy them whenever he wants. And they're way closer to Hannibal, Hannibal's camp. Oh my gosh, he's like, wow. He, he almost like put them in a trap. Oh, the shoot. Romans advance. <laughs> and they're way more organized too. Than, than uh, the Romans are. Hannibal restrains his men from advancing on the enemy. The Romans too halt their advance, refusing to attack the well-positioned oh, Carthaginians, who can now be supported from the camp oh, with projectiles and fresh troops. Yeah. The day draws to a close. Oh, that was it. Ah, oh, it would have been so cool if they would have just drawn them in and then crushed the Romans. That would have been awesome. Hannibal demonstrates his shrewdness by not committing to an uncertain battle. Yeah, I don't know. Hold on. Whoops. Shrewdness definition. The quality of having were showing good powers of judgment. Do you want to hear the remaining one? Yes. This is a rare term, a group of apes. Oh. So, oh, Hannibal is a group of apes, okay. And by restraining his troops, he exhibits what he would become so famous for, his extraordinary ability to exercise control over his army. The Romans retire towards their camp, satisfied at scoring a victory against Hannibal's troops, their morale and confidence partially restored. Longus, who is described by sources as having an aggressive temperament, shows his eagerness to do battle as soon as possible. He won't have to wait long. At dawn, Roman guards sound the alarm. The Carthaginians are attacking the camp. Awoken to projectiles flying over the palisades, Roman troops are ordered to get ready for battle. On empty stomachs, the men rush to form up in front of their tents in frigid conditions. Longus sends all 4,000 of his cavalry against the Numidians. Oh, shoot. Mostly followed by 6,000. Oh, no. Delites. But the Numidians 
soon break off. This would have been like a perfect opportunity for Hannibal to send the rest of his army in while they're distracted. As the fighting moves north, the first cavalrymen engage in hit and run tactics. Longus marches out with the rest of his army to meet the enemy. Heavy infantry forms into three columns, each some 3.5 kilometers long. They lag behind the cavalry and Velites, but make steady progress. Oh, shoot. Yeah, this is a great opportunity. Hannibal needs to do something. Numidians continue to avoid a direct confrontation with the Roman cavalry in Velites. Meanwhile, Hannibal gathers his officers to lay out his plans. Nice. He offers words of encouragement. He needs to hurry up. These troops are going to get crushed. And orders them to ready the men for battle. Well rested and well fed, Carthaginian troops take the field. To the east, the skirmish continues. The Numidians find themselves backed against the Trevia. They oh, start oh no. crossing the river, and they continue to pull back, pursued by the Romans. Arriving with the infantry and eager for battle, Longus orders the army to deploy on the western bank. The three Oh my gosh, these people are... the Romans... They seem to be too aggressive, I guess you could say. Like, think about earlier, uh, they were at least Longus, that officer, the guy, whatever. He seems to be really aggressive, and I think that's his weakness. Because earlier, he would just went straight for the Romans and didn't stop until he finally realized how vulnerable. Well, I mean, no, no, because that wasn't, Longus didn't have control over that situation. The soldiers did that on their own. But I mean, earlier, he just kept sending in troops in the skirmish. While Hannibal decided it would have been a good idea to stop. And now look at him, he's gonna use like literally all of his troops and put himself in an interesting situation to say the least. Oh no, I paused. Okay, so I paused my thing so I can get us, you know, some almonds. But then, it... no, I started it all over. Hold on. I think this might be it. Let's see. Just deep. Freezing water. Jeez. Meanwhile. Oh, yeah, that's definitely gonna mess up their troops a little bit. Hannibal sends 8,000 infantry forward to support the Numidian retreat and to provide a screen for his own deployment. Oh, my gosh. And again, the Carthaginians are really orderly and organized while they are just all scattered. And yeah, just. It's not going to be good whenever they confront each other. And maybe the Romans are going to do what they did earlier and just retreat all the way back to base. But something tells me the Romans are just going to keep going. He then moves his main line about one kilometer towards the approaching Romans. Across the field, Longus's army takes several hours to deploy. After fording the cold Trebia, his men are hungry, soaked, and standing in the near freezing temperature. Yeah, that must be horrible. The Roman consul places his velites in the front, forms his veteran infantry in the center, with Gallic and allied infantry on either side, and cavalry on the flanks. Hannibal deploys his infantry in a thin line. Gallic allies in the center, with Spanish and Libyan. Infantry on either side, elephants flank the infantry, while the Numidian and Gallic cavalry is further wide. Around noon, Longus orders his entire line to advance, confident in the clear numerical advantage of his heavy infantry. Don't be so confident, dude. The Romans advance in good order. The flat plain, free from any obstacles, seems an ideal battleground for their style of warfare. Meanwhile, Hannibal holds the line, letting the enemy come to him. Oh Skirmishes get into range. The Roman troops must be really exhausted at this point. And begin exchanging projectiles. With Valeric slingers in their ranks, combining with javelinmen, the Carthaginians quickly get the upper hand against the Roman Velites, who used up many of their javelins while pursuing the Numidian cavalry earlier in the day. Skirmishers from both sides withdraw through the gaps as the main lines of infantry close in. The heavier, 
more compact Roman infantry pushes the Carthaginian line back, causing heavy casualties to Hannibal's Gallic infantry oh, in the centre. No. On the flanks, Hannibal orders his cavalry to push forward. Some of the Roman horses become frightened by Hannibal's elephants, causing disruption within the ranks. Oh, no. The groups of Roman velites, especially trained to deal with elephants, mix with the cavalry and attack the terrifying beasts, wounding and killing many. Eventually, the Numidians managed to overwhelm and advance against the Roman cavalry. But despite Roman flanks being pushed back, the Carthaginian center is crumbling. Veteran legionnaires are hacking through the Gallic infantry. Without any reinforcements available, it seems that Hannibal cannot stop the onslaught. But what the Romans don't know is that while surveying the field on the eve of battle, Hannibal personally picked 2,000 elite troops and positioned them in a dry riverbed hidden from view. Now, they oh emerge from the ravine with perfect timing. Just oh as my god. Finally round the Roman cavalry, poised to encircle the enemy. Hard oh, pressed oh, the front no. by elephants, Carthaginian infantry and skirmish. It seems to be Hannibal's like signature move, like flanking and encirclements. I mean, it usually is for most armies, like who have really good generals, but. Just the wings of the Roman infantry buckle as the Numidians attack their rear. Meanwhile, Hannibal's center collapses as the veteran Roman heavy infantry cuts right through the Carthaginian line, still unaffected wow. by the encirclement thanks to their discipline and organization. However, oh, they just ripped a hole right in the center. Realizing the battle is lost, the legionnaires retreat back across the river to Placentia, maintaining their battle formation. Roman casualties are heavy, likely around 28,000 dead or wounded, while the Carthaginian losses are much lower, between 3,000 and 5,000. Wow. Losing most of his elephants, possibly all but one, is the only major loss for hmm. Hannibal at Trebia. In just a matter of weeks, Hannibal outperformed both Roman consuls with superior planning near perfect coordination and control of his troops. News of the defeat rocks the Roman Senate and causes widespread panic among the population. The damage to Roman prestige persuades many more Gauls to join Hannibal. Oh, Additional attacks on Roman outposts and towns cause further disruption before cold weather finally forces armies of both sides into winter quarters. But as Hannibal's devastating campaign in Italy gains momentum, I've seen- I never talked about the Roman troops that were heading towards Carthage and the Roman troops over there. A seemingly minor event in Iberia could threaten the Carthaginian war effort in the long run. The battles of the Second Punic War belong among the greatest in history. Some of which you can see on the Great Courses Plus in the highly deep. Right. So, oh, it's at the end. Yep. Well, thank you all for watching, guys. Wow. That was a really cool episode. And make sure to check out Stray Marsh. I have. The original video in the description, like I always do, so you can always check it out on your own. But yeah. Very cool. We're back into episode five tomorrow. Thank you all for watching, everybody. Hello, everyone. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like it and subscribe to my channel. And you know, turn on the notification bell thingy. And if you didn't, then make sure to leave a uh, thumbs down. But yeah, that would be greatly appreciated. And while you're at it, go ahead and watch my other videos. They're Probably just as good, and if not better than this one right now. Except for my oldest videos, don't watch those. And, you know, subscribe to these people down here, my fellow sergeants. They're other YouTubers that I either know, or I have in high regards. Yeah, even my cat agrees. So, thank you for watching, and have a great day.